Hi, I'm Rob from B&H and I've got a question for you. Why is it that your mixes sound good in your studio, but when you play them on other systems and in other rooms, they sound, how shall we say, bad? Well, poor mix translation is often caused by inaccurate monitoring. These days, a lot of music is mixed in home and project studios that have not been acoustically treated, like this one. So you get reflections, standing waves, and other issues that can really color the sound. On top of that, some monitors, especially models aimed at the budget conscious, aren't particularly accurate. So if the speaker has too much high end, for example, your mix may end up sounding dull everywhere else. If your monitors can't reproduce proper low end, you may be pushing the bass up too much in your mix to compensate. Then you get the chance to hear it on a big club system and you realize just how bottom heavy your mix really is. Acoustically treating the room if you can will help. As you can see though, that hasn't happened in this particular setup, but one fairly easy place to start is a solid pair of monitors. Mackie's MR series delivers quality, accurate sound at a great price point. These MR524s are the smallest in the lineup with a 5.24 inch polypropylene woofer, a one inch silk dome tweeter, and a frequency response from 45 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. And like most studio monitors these days, the 50 watt 524 is a powered or active monitor with a class AB amp built in. Personally, I really like near field monitors this size because they fit into a small workspace but they still deliver enough volume that I can hear the details and get into the groove. I also consider them a reasonable middle ground in terms of what the audience might be listening on, which is anywhere from earbuds, computer speakers, and home stereos, all the way to stadium-sized PA systems. In terms of accuracy, the Mackie MRs offer a couple of smart features designed to help you create mixes that sound good anywhere. This logarithmic waveguide is designed to minimize reflections and match the high frequency dispersion of the tweeter to that of the woofer for an ultra wide stereo image and sweet spot with seamless transition from high to low frequencies. The tweeter and woofer are physically time aligned, eliminating the need for delay circuits that can color the sound, while the high end has the clarity needed for vocal balancing and the fast transient response needed for percussive sounds. Now when speakers couple with surfaces, even desktops and speaker stands, you'll hear more bass. So ideally, you'd like to place your monitors at least a few feet from the back and side walls of your studio. In reality, that might not be possible, and Mackie's acoustic space controls match the low-end output of the speaker to its placement in the room, and the cabinets are also internally braced to help minimize vibrations and distortions. Similarly, you can adjust the high end as well, either to compensate for the sound of your studio space or for common mixing errors that you notice when you play your mixes in other rooms. So for example, if your mixes sound consistently dull when you play them in other environments, like your car for example, you can engage the 2 dB high end reduction. And the idea here is that by pulling back on the high end in the monitors a little bit, you'll mix a little brighter to compensate and set EQs and balances that translate elsewhere really well. Conversely, if your mixes are too bright, you might benefit from the 2 dB high end boost setting on the MRs. Now a common practice among engineers is to listen at lower volumes for levels the balances between the vocals and the guitars maybe, and then louder for details, maybe getting the decay just right on that phasing reverb, for example. Low end works on similar lines. If you're the kind of producer who needs to feel the bass, then you need to move a certain amount of air. And if the 5.24 inch woofer isn't enough, then you can supplement it with a 10 inch MRS-10 subwoofer. The sub will also work with Mackie's larger 65 watt 624 and 85 watt 824 models if you wanna start with an MR with more volume and low end right out of the gate. Space is pretty tight in the living room, so let's say we can expand a bit, perhaps to something approaching Studio B here in Manhattan's Blast Off Productions. Now, if you were to start with the MR524s, maybe add a sub, and then later decide to supplement with a larger pair of monitors, you might wanna mix it up with a different manufacturer, but if you wanna stay within the Mackie ecosystem, a move to consider would be adding a pair of larger Mackies, like this pair of HR824 Mark IIs, or a pair of Mackie's new XR824s. 
These systems will deliver more volume, and the larger 8-inch woofers on these will deliver lower bass frequencies, which is quite nice for hip-hop and electronic music mixing. Now, of course, the computer running your DAW has to connect with the speakers, and Mackie's big knob system allows you to switch between input sources and monitors. Now, the model here at Blastoff is a bit older, but the big knob studio is both a monitor switcher and audio interface, great for everything from voiceover and podcasting work to capturing singer-songwriter performance. Performances. It's built like a tank, and you can switch between two monitor pairs and three input sources. First, a pair of quarter-inch XLR combo jacks for line and mic inputs with Onyx preamps and optional phantom power. Second, another pair of quarter-inch inputs. Or third, the USB feed from your computer. The direct monitoring knob means that when you want to use the inputs to record vocals or maybe guitar, the performers can play and sing to parts already on the computer while hearing themselves in the headphones without any monitor latency. And another nice touch on the mixing side of things is the mono button, which you should use to check your mix in mono before you finally bounce down. A lot of times, mixes are played on mono PA systems, and those cool phasey effects that you conjured up just might disappear when the mix is summed to mono. Of course, there are a lot of other things you can do to help your mixes translate, A being to other mixes that you know well, filtering out unneeded lows, listening to compressed formats, etc. But accurate monitors like Mackie's MR, HR, and XR series will give you a serious head start, and Mackie's Big Knob series puts volume switching and interfacing right where you need it on the desktop. I'm Rob from B&H, and thanks for watching.